Until the mid-18th century, Bristol was the UK's second largest shipping port, with its rapid growth rooted in the tobacco and slave trade. The huge tidal range on the River Avon carried the big ships eight miles along the gorge from the sea to the city centre docks. By the 1760s, the river became congested, with large ships regularly getting stranded in the mud at low tide. With trade being lost to Liverpool, the dock authorities urgently needed a solution. This is the original plan from 1767, which proposed damming the river with an adjacent lock. However, this presented a problem. It would destroy the tidal flow that carried the ships to and from the sea, and so a new cut river was proposed around the harbour to keep the tides flowing. Engineer William Jessop put forward the final plan, which was approved by Parliament, and work began in 1804. By the time it was finished in 1809, the floating harbour had cost almost twice the original estimate of £530,000. During the Victorian age, the harbour's shipyards constructed larger and larger ships, most notably Brunel's SS Great Britain in 1843. Ironically, this hastened the decline of the city docks by proving the feasibility of large cargo ships. By 1972, two huge docks had been built at Avonmouth, rendering the floating harbour redundant as a freight dock. Since the 1980s, millions of pounds have been spent regenerating the harbourside into a tourist attraction, as well as new homes and waterside offices. Former workshops and warehouses have largely been converted or replaced by cultural venues and fashionable apartment buildings. The waterfront today bears little resemblance to Jessop's original floating harbour, but is a testament to Bristol's docking history. After 200 years, it is still in a state of transition, and only time will tell what the future holds for Bristol's floating harbour.